the AMD FX, a controversial line of processors loved by some and pretty much hated by all the rest. Now with the FX, AMD claimed that they offered the highest clocks and the most cores that you could get on any consumer desktop. But this is where the controversy comes in. You see, AMD marketed these as having more cores than they actually had. In this illustration from AMD, it shows eight cores, with each pair sharing a block of cache. However, that's not all that was shared. Other important components such as the FPU were also shared. You didn't get eight identical cores. What you got was something that at first glance resembled Intel's hyperthreading. An eight core FX CPU was actually just four cores with eight threads. A class action lawsuit was brought up against AMD, which they lost. They were ordered to pay 12.1 million to its customers who purchased a select line of its FX CPUs. And I've read each of these users could receive up to $35 per CPU purchased. Now, back when this was all going on, I heard about it, but I didn't pay it much mind. I mostly worked with Intel CPUs at the time at work, and I never really had a chance to even use an FX until now. In the prep to make this video, I purchased an FX6300, which is a six core CPU. I wanted that to go against an i7 quad core with hyperthreading. I figured six real cores against four with hyperthreading this should be interesting. That's when I learned about the real story behind the FX hatred. So in this video, I'll be comparing an FX6300 against an Intel i7-3700. I'll be rebenchmarking and releasing a second video using something like an 8300 or an 8350, which claims to be an eight core, and we'll see what the difference is. So for this video, we have an Intel i7 3770. It was released quarter two of 2012, selling for about $300 US. Its stock speed was 3.4, but it could turbo up to 3.9 gigahertz and had four cores and eight threads. The FX CPU we'll be using is a 6300, released a few months after this i7 and sold for around $130 US. This CPU has a stock speed of 3.5 gigahertz, but it can turbo up to 4.1. Now that 4.1 is for single threaded light use only, and you'll hardly ever see a clock to that. So I consider 3.8 to be the true turbo limit. It has six threads and either three or six cores, depending on what camp you're in. Right off the bat, it's not looking good for the FX, with the i7 scoring nearly 2,500 points higher in the CPU test. And the memory test isn't any better with the i7 scoring over double that of the FX. Now, when I first saw these results, I thought, no, something's got to be wrong. So I even swapped out the RAM for some faster stuff and checked all the bias settings. This was the fastest score I could get. After looking online, I found others scoring similar results. So I guess this is just what it can do. And real quick, if you've made it this far, uh, if you wouldn't mind clicking the like button and uh, subscribing if you haven't, it really does help. Thanks. In 7-Zip, the i7 again finished first, nearly twice as fast as the FX. I ran Cinebench twice. This first run is single-threaded, just to see how well it handles single-threaded workloads and if the two extra cores were a major problem in this benchmark. And well, no. It seems even for single-threaded jobs, the CPU falls far behind the i7. The FX finished about 8 minutes after the i7 and scored over 200 points lower. It was a similar deal once in multi-threaded mode. The FX just couldn't keep up and again finished last, although it seems like it was a bit close for this time, until we look at the actual score and notice it scored about 1,500 points lower. In Handbrake, the FX failed us again, rendering 15 FPS slower and finishing about 6 minutes later. Now I know XM Rig has its own built-in benchmark, but you know I like to keep things as organic as possible. And once again, the FX fell behind. I tested YouTube at 1080 by 60 frames per second using a browser with all hardware acceleration disabled. It's the CPUs that are doing all the work. Now, neither seem to have trouble here. Both played nice and smooth with no drop frames. The only drop frames that you'll see is when the video first loads, and I can't really reset that. But other than that, everything played just fine on both. Heaven ran fine on both, however once again the i7 pulled ahead. The FX lagged behind about 83 FPS on average. Now here's something I just found kind of interesting. For superposition, it took the FX exactly twice as long to load the benchmark as the i7. I just found that kind of, kind of interesting. Once in, we see that again, both have decent scores, but the i7 blew away the FX. The FX averaged 79 FPS, while the i7 averaged 132. Another thing to mention is the minimum FPS. The FX's minimum FPS was 49, while the i7 was 102, over double. Portal 2, as usual, ran perfectly on both. The i7 had higher frame rates, but only by about 10 FPS on average. In the Unreal Tournament 3 benchmark, both had great scores, but the i7 pulled ahead scoring an average FPS of 477, while the FX was down to 248. It's almost half the rate of the i7. 
Need for Speed Most Wanted again ran fine on both, but once again, the Intel run pulled ahead by about 10 FPS on average. The FX was not happy about running BMG, especially the benchmark. Here it shows the average FPS was 16 for the FX, while the i7 scored over double at 43 FPS. With GTA 4, as usual, here are the settings I'm going to be using on both. And GTA ran fine on both, but as with all tests that came before it, the i7 pulled ahead. But again, both felt about the same to play, and I know this is where the 1% frame rate bench would come in handy. Since we all know that with anything over 60 FPS, the benchmark is worthless. I used Afterburner to find the averages, and yes, I just realized I forgot to enable the 1%. However, during the benchmark, I drove through all the same streets on both and tried to keep things as identical as possible. The outcome was 109 for the IS7 and 62.5 for the FX. GTA 5 also played perfectly fine on both. Both were very responsive and everything played extremely smooth. The only issue I had was with the benchmark scene load time. Each scene took far longer on the FX, but once it was loaded and synced up, you can see them side by side. Both look fine, however the i7 again pulled far ahead. The final average frame rate outcome was 93 for the i7 and 60 for the FX. So what about overclocking? Well, I overclocked the FX a little. After playing around, I was able to overclock it to 4.3 gigahertz by raising both the multiplier and the bus speed. Sometimes a little is all that it really needs to improve performance. Remember the Core 2 lineup was that way. Bump up the FSB a little bit and you have a whole new CPU. Well, unfortunately, that wasn't the case here. The overclock did help, but only slightly. Checking it out with Passmark shows a good improvement for the total CPU score, but still nowhere close to the i7. The memory score showed a slight improvement, but again, still a thousand points behind the i7. With the single-threaded Cinebench run, it finished only a couple minutes sooner than its stock run. Multi-threaded was a similar story, although better, it still fell behind. With Handbrake, the overclocked FX did much better and rendered roughly 9 FPS slower than the i7. That's a whole lot better than the 15 FPS slower that it got at stock speeds. I also ran Y-Cruncher on all three. Obviously, the i7 came out ahead with a 40% difference between it and the stock FX. That in the app test, there was often between a 40-50% to 50 performance difference between the i7 and FX. With the games tested, and with the exception of Portal 2 and Need for Speed, it was even more pronounced. Taking a look at all these test results, I can see why people hated these processors. Both CPUs were built around the same time, within a year of each other. Yet the newer one was slower, yet both are running around similar clock speeds. The one problem with this FX, again, is the core count. This one is essentially a tri-core uh, going against a quad-core, or if you insist on calling them cores, a six-core going against a four-core with hyper-threading. So I will be tracking down a either an FX8300 or an 8350. I'm hoping for an 8350, which is an eight-core version of this, and we'll try it again. And... Uh, would an 8350 be that much faster that it can keep up or even overtake this i7? Well, we'll, we'll see. If you made it this far, thanks again for watching. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you next time.